summer 2020. Months of isolation. Months of withdrawal from ancient cities and megalithic monuments. In late July, finally, historic sites begin opening up again to the public for a brief window. So, masked up, as is a legal requirement on British public transport, I'm off. So I've just got to Ely in the Fens. Today it's a modern town, similar to most towns in Britain. But uh, once, a thousand years ago, this entire landscape was coated in a thick layer of boggy marsh known as the Fens. Later on, it was drained in the later Middle Ages by monks who could then use it as uh, some of the most fertile farmland in the whole country. But uh, it's a very historic landscape here. Ely was the site of a great battle against William the Conqueror and the Normans, where the great Anglo-Saxon hero, Hereward the Wake, made his stand, supported partly by the Danes from across the sea. But as soon as the Norman knights turned up, the uh, rebellion filtered away. Really excited to be back at it. Bloody steaming up, steaming up so much. But Ely isn't my final destination. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm headed somewhere else. Some would call it a river. But really, it's so much more. An ancient highway leading to the sea. long before Vikings and Normans. The first invaders to come to this land in the Middle Ages, in the twilight after the fall of Rome, were the Anglo-Saxons. I can't go to Peru, Mexico, Turkey or Greece at the moment. My trip's all being cancelled indefinitely. So, I'm headed closer to home instead. I'm going in search of the very heart of the Anglo-Saxon invasion of the 5th, 6th and 7th centuries, to the very beginnings of verifiable kingship in the early Anglo-Saxon world. To the most famous and important of all archaeological discoveries in Britain. To Sutton Hoo. Let's go. So I've arrived. I've just got to Woodbridge in Suffolk on the trail of the Sutton Hoo helmet. It's amazing to think that this place, almost a private river for the kings of East Anglia, may have once been plied by the mighty ship that Redwald was buried in. This is the River Deben. Today, it's a picturesque place, home to wildlife reserves and angling retreats. But 1,500 years ago, this was a highway. And in 1939, site of an incredible archaeological discovery. I'm walking along this river from Woodbridge to the burial mounds of the kings of old. Come across a fantastic sign here. Doesn't get simpler than that. It's also amazing to think that the pub that I'm staying in may have been frequented by Edith Pretty, who instigated the discovery in the first place. 
I later found out that many of the archaeologists working on the dig in 1939 did indeed stay at the Bull Hotel, where I was staying. And many of the artefacts that actually ended up on display in the British Museum went through the pub on their way to the lab to be analysed. But much more on that in a future History Time documentary. The Bull is a great place to stay. Good beer, good people, highly recommended for a visit to Sutton Hoo. So we've got boatyards all along this little passageway that we're walking along the River Deben. It's not too much of a stretch to imagine similar shipyards existing all the way back in the early Middle Ages. We know that Ipswich was a trading centre from the 7th century AD. Why not Woodbridge? So behind me, we have the town of Woodbridge. Over off on the other side of the river is the royal burial ground of the East Anglian kings. Now, surely this river itself, their mounds overlooking it, the source of their power, artery all the way to the North Sea, going to Denmark, Sweden, the land of Beowulf beyond, Geatland. Surely this was a private river dominated by these kings, perhaps even a source of their power to begin with. If you can hold the entire river, exacting tribute off anyone who plied your waters, you'd be extremely rich. Riches would buy retainers. Retainers would win you lands. And there we have the very birth of a monarchy in England. The divine right of kings would have started in places like this. One of the earliest places settled by the Anglo-Saxons in Britain. This is a historic landscape. The inspiration for Tolkien's Lord of the Rings the Middle Earth of the Anglo-Saxon era is one steeped in mystery and intrigue. For the most part, too far removed from the literate world of previous and later ages to say much with certainty in history. Instead, much can be gleaned from archaeology and the landscape itself at places like Sutton Hoo. I'm here on the banks of the Deben and there are boats, there are boats and there are more boats. Everybody has a boat. There are people still making a living from the sea and the river all over here. Obviously we now live in an interconnected world. Back in the early Middle Ages, everyone would have made a living off the river. If you wanted to get any sort of way ahead in life, you'd look to the sea, you'd look to the river, you'd look to the waters and someone controlling those waters. Endless amounts of power. Endless. I cross over a bridge, leaving the water behind me as the outlying trees of Rendlesham Forest begin to rise. A little further on, I begin to see the unmistakable upcoming signs of an English heritage site. This road's kind of intense. Please let the tea shop be open. Oh yes, we're here. We are bloody here. I'm delighted to be allowed in at my allotted time. Unfortunately, the tea shop and visitor centre are all closed. But the rest of the site, at least, is good to go. Now, <clears throat> in the early 7th century, this whole region was held by a mighty king called Redwald, straight out of the sagas. This was a ruler who wore a helmet, reminiscent of the ones found at Vendel and Valsgard in Sweden. This was very much the age of myths and heroes and legends and monsters. 
Now when Redwald ruled this place, Bede calls him a Bretwalder, which means he exercised Imperium. He wasn't just a king, he was a king of kings. He held power over the other Anglo-Saxon states. And when he died, we don't know how. He may have died in battle. We know his son died in battle at the River Idol against the mighty Ethelfrith of Northumbria, a conquering warlord of the north who brought the old north to his knees. Raidwald converted to Christianity at one point in his life. So Bede tells us, we actually find what may well be his baptismal spoons. Uh, we can still see those at the British Museum today with Saul and Paul written on them. And it may well be, I mean, it may well be that he hedged his bets at the end of his life and they were put inside his burial mound with his grave goods because Redwald died a pagan. He was buried with all the trimmings of the pagan world, covered with all of the items needed to rule in an Anglo-Saxon context. Ceremonial shield, swords, spears, sacrificed with horses, men even. And when he died, this was a king who was loved by his people, his warriors, his kinspeople, dragged him in a boat from the River Deben that he controlled all the way up this hill to inter him in the earth. There's a very similar funeral in Beowulf, two of them in fact, and we get a little bit, a little bit of the symbolism, a little bit of the, the feel of that time when we come here. Off in the distance we can see the River Deben clearly would have been even clearer back then. These trees would have been deforested to allow total control of this region. Redwall's royal capital at Rendlesham is upriver, downriver. We go all the way to the North Sea and the continent beyond. Trade, wealth, power. And here we go. We're gonna walk up the hill. We're gonna walk up to the burial mounds of the past. Let's go have a look. We will see the burial mounds, but not just yet. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, there are so many more journeys to come. What are your favourite historical sites, and where would you like to see me visit next? Let me know what you think in the comments. But wait, the video isn't over yet. I'm temporarily free from the constraints of three-hour history documentaries. Ha 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 ha. Now, great King Redwald, I dedicate these overnight oats to you. Let's dig in. <laughs>